Welcome everybody to today's vlog. I'm going to talk about the realities of being a professional developer. I think that people who are new to the game, they have a misconception about what it is like to be a developer. They kind of think it's maybe like being a chef where you have a set of recipes and then you just apply these recipes like they were templates. Ah, we're going to create a shopping cart. Here's how you create a shopping cart. It's exactly like this. Here's how you create a messaging system. It's exactly like this. Etc. 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 Here's how you create a CMS. It's exactly like this. No. Being a software developer is much more like being a spy, like being a detective. So, what do I mean by that? I mean that when you are a professional software de developer, you're constantly learning and researching and figuring out the, uh, the equation, figuring out the best way to handle the job at hand. You see, when it comes to building apps for people and writing code, there's no one size fits all solution, period. It just doesn't work that way because every single business, every single application will have its own particular needs. You're not Gordon Ramsay, the chef, who just applies a recipe, you're more like Sherlock Holmes where you're investigating using processes that you've learned, using uh, your fundamental knowledge of the process, of the, uh, of the skill set, you know, in this case it's programming, to get to an answer. And the answer, of course, in pro programming and software development is, of course, the app that you are building. When you first come out of learning to code, when you first complete your code course, and if you're properly trained, you know your fundamentals well, when you get your first project, the last thing you should expect that it's just gonna be super easy and clear to begin with. The way you develop your skills is to actually build real things, whether it be web apps or iOS apps or Java-based apps or whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. You got to consider the process like an investigation, like you're a detective, like you're uncovering what the final app is going to be. Now, as you become more experienced, as you learn the game better, of course, you're going to be able to come to conclusions much more quickly because you're going to have, you will have seen certain problems that you saw before. So, in my courses, we do provide projects: shopping carts, CMS, WordPress themes, etc. But they're not meant to be uh, the cut in stone Ten Commandments of how you build a shopping cart, for instance. It's much more of a just a demonstration of how you might approach it to bridge the, ca the gap between foundation and actual production code. In the end, though, your clients will have their own particular needs in terms of uh, how they might want their shopping cart implemented. They may want to sell digital products. They may want to sell video or books. They may want to sell physical products. They may include taxes or not. They may do shipping. They may do drop shipping. You don't know what it is. So just because you do my shopping cart tutorial walkthrough and the way that we present it, it's, it's not the set in stone way. It's just showing you how to do it. Now, if you are a martial artist, a fighter, boxing, jiu-jitsu, whatever, Thai boxing, you gotta think of it this way. Traditional martial artists will have set, set katas, which are pre-rehearsed uh, combinations of movements, pretend fights, or they'll have something called a twid set, where you have two people going at each other but in a rehearsed in a rehearsed set of moves you know, i punch i block then i kick you block i punch i move out of the way etc et these are very popular martial arts and i think originally they were they were there just as uh, a basic guide to give people an idea but what happened as so often in academics you have academics and martial arts they became too rel relied upon these these katas and twin sets uh, and then people forgot what they were originally trying to learn how to do was fight now any person who's actually done fighting arts knows that these katas and twin sets are really very very limited in terms of what they can do for you the real way to learn how to fight ultimately once you have your basics to get in there and spar you have to spar you have to fight you gotta work out how you do things and every time you spar every time you fight you get better 
doing pre-rehearsed or pre-set katas and twin sets is not going to make you into a good fighter. In fact, we've had many people, I remember we had people, black belts and highly ranked in traditional styles, they would come to the gym and they literally thought they were great fighters because they had done all these katas, these pre-rehearsed sets. And they would get in the ring and they would... Uh, they would get they would get a major beating pretty quick, pretty easily, and they were flabbergasted that they actually didn't know how to fight. Same thing with the project-based courses. Without the foundation, these project-based courses are not going to teach you much. And even if you do a hundred project-based courses, you have some knowledge, but ultimately you have to get in there to actually build things from scratch. So that's why, as I did with my martial arts, when I taught martial arts and taught people in a fight, you get your basics down solid, then you learn the key foundational uh, skill sets. In fighting, of course, it's timing, tactics, it's body mechanics, it's mental conditioning, physical conditioning, a few other things. You notice I didn't mention techniques. I didn't mention walkthrough tutorials, right? I didn't mention twin sets. So I hope that makes sense. So when you're getting into the programming game to conclude here, Try not to feel so nervous that you don't know all the answers off the top. Nobody does. And that's, in fact, what you're paid to do. Developers are paid to figure out the problem like Sherlock Holmes, like the detective. Unearth how things should be done given the needs of that particular project. Because it's continuously changing. So yes, there are generalities about shopping carts or about content management systems, etc. But ultimately... Uh, the reason you have programmers is because they are writing custom code and by very, the very definition when it's custom it's unique to that particular project. I hope that helps so when you get into your first project if you're worried that you don't know everything that's normal don't worry about it you'll learn you figure it out as you go that's why it's so important that you have the fundamentals down because that will make learning the new stuff and unearthing what you need to unearth for that project so much easier. I hope that helps. Bye-bye.